Engineer 775 here, wanted to ask you a question. Have you ever been ripped off? Uh, has anybody ever sold you a battery they said was good but it really wasn't? Well I have. I've had some very large 8A, 8D batteries that folks said that they were good. They registered fine with a voltmeter but the, that didn't mean that they were good. Um, so the plates can be all sulfated and they can, the battery can be a complete uh, dead battery. So uh, one of the things I want to share with you, there's two troubleshooting, well there's, a, there's three, a simple voltmeter obviously to test the voltage, is, is the battery charged, and then a hydrometer which tests the specific gravity of the uh, contents of the battery. This one I like because it's temperature compensated, it's a cool morning so it's telling me to subtract uh, 14 from the reading on the actual float in the hydrometer. So it's a temperature compensated battery checker. This is just testing specific gravity, which is a great test, but it might not be sufficient. And so what you can do, and none of these are expensive, I forgot this, I'm going to put a link to this, I, I think it's $10, but you want to be able to check your lead acid batteries. But the other is doing just a basic load test. This is a standard 130 amp load tester that you push the button for 10 seconds and it will test 6 volt batteries, 12 volt batteries and you don't test a battery bank, you need to test them individually. You hook up the negative first and you hook up the positive second. Now on the meter, I'm close, I mean I haven't had a charger or anything on this and it's close to good. It's showing me that it's got um, like 12.4, 12.5 volts. A full 12 volt battery is 12.7, uh, 12.8. I'm going to hold the button down and if it stays in the good, it's heading towards the weak. I knew it wasn't the best of batteries, but it's also the state of charge is low. And you'll see the glow, and that's what the, the tester's doing. It's just uh, it's a heat load, resistive heating heat load, that's uh, keeping me warm on this cool morning. But this battery's testing out good for a load, and uh, so I'm not going to throw that away. I'm not going to trade it in. A lot of people get rid of the batteries before they're either haven't charged the battery, the battery's fine. And so these two tools are great. Obviously add a voltmeter to these the tools, but a hydrometer and a load tester. You won't spend a lot of money, it'll save you money. If I had these that day that guy was selling me those uh, renewable energy batteries that were junk, I would have I would have been able to buy three or four of these and I took a chance. I was I didn't have them with me and the guy said, "Hey, do you want these batteries?" and I bought them and I got them back and load tested them and they were junk. So really appreciated that. Uh, so you want to save some money and you want to make sure your batteries are good or you don't want to throw your batteries away before their time or chain, turn them in. So use these great, these great tools. Okay, I think that's it. Let's go look at some other batteries. Okay, on, a, on these batteries, again, you, the hydrometer, obviously you want to check these from time to time because these batteries are lead acid. Um, they they vent gases and so they're losing um, they're losing the fluid. Um, so you add distilled water to them to top them off from time to time. You just got to keep an eye on them. Yes, they make automatic water. So I'm going to suck up some uh, of the battery acid, and you can see by the green zone. I'm in the green zone on here. And again, if I am to sub because of the temperature, it's telling me to subtract off 13 off the hydrometer. So I'm still going to be in the good zone. Okay, I'm still in the good zone on this and so these batteries have tested out. I've tested both of them and they're very good. I just check the cell. I don't need to add any more distilled water to them. I put my battery maintainer. I like these little Schumacher battery maintainers. They're like 35 bucks and these are when you spend this kind of money on these batteries, you know they're three, four, five hundred dollars a piece, depending on the manufacturer. You want to make sure you keep them floated, just because it can deep cycle. Don't deep cycle your batteries. That's how you kill batteries. Uh, so, you know, and they're all different battery types. So I'm making some generalizations, but the the more this battery is kept charged and floated, the better off it's going to be. On some solar chargers, you're going to have an equalizer mode and equal to equalization um, buttons. Uh, some of the Xantrex have those 
and they will run the voltage up on say a 12 volt battery to around 15 and a half to 16 volts and that burns off the sulfate the sulfation that's on the the plates the lead plates gets rid of that so it kind of renews that battery a normal charger like this will not equalize a battery but uh, unless you spend the money to get a charger that will actually equalize um, you can definitely hurt your batteries that way so it's poured on a lead acid now on an AGM battery absorb glass mat and I believe a gel as well that uh, equalization isn't as much of an issue the other thing is geometry. These tall batteries are, are better in equalization than the uh, shorter squatter batteries. The fluid, the, um, the lead acid, the acid mixes better. Doesn't, you don't have a stratification like you do in these tall batteries uh, where you need, that, you, know, you need that occasionally, that exercising to burn off the plates, recirculate and mix the fluid. And um, So that's, that's it. Don't get ripped off. Um, simple hydrometer and a simple load tester OTC is what these were I'll show I'll put a link in there and they're not bad they'll save you a lot of money okay I think that's enough a uh, little bat battery tutorial for the for the day engineer 775 signing off